Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I've got another PC cooling video for you here on the channel today. And this one's gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be a topic I have not yet explored, namely whether or not a fan that performs well on a radiator will perform just as well on a heatsink, given that both are a type of CPU cooler. Now, the reason that I'm going down this path is because back in April, 2020, about a year ago, I started my first fan shootout. It was 120 millimeter fans on 120 millimeter radiator, really pretty basic. And I found that some fans were better than others. In fact, the best fan was this one right here, the NF-A12X25. But then I did seven more videos on this topic. And one of the things I found was that the NF-A12X25 was really good on a radiator, but wasn't particularly good as a case fan. And then I went on to name other fans as my choice for the best case fans. Then I looked at 140 millimeter fan performance had some interesting observations there as well. And over the course of the past few months, I've been testing a number of different cooling products from radiators to large coolers. And I found, you know what? In the data, I see an anomaly here. The NF-A12X25 is extremely good on radiators. I found that in my roundup of fans for 280 millimeter radiators, it outperformed some larger fans, in fact. It actually matched this 140 millimeter fan from Nocto, which was pretty mind blowing at the time. But I decided to look at some data a little bit more carefully and attach these two fans or variations of them, as I'll explain in a moment, to a heatsink to see if the delta would remain the same between these two fans. Now, if you look at a heatsink, you'll note that the fin arrays are pretty widely spaced. Light can pass through them quite easily, which means air can pass through them quite easily. Now, they're fairly thick from front to back, but they don't look like a radiator, which is typically only 27 millimeters thick and has a very tightly spaced fin array. That means there's a lot more resistance. Now, for the same reason that a fan that's really good on a radiator won't necessarily be that great in a case fan application where you have very little resistance, it's possible that a fan that's really good on a radiator may not be at its best on a heatsink. And frankly, most people still use heatsinks to cool their CPUs, not radiators or liquid cooling. And that's what got me thinking that I should present this data. And to be clear, I collected this data for other purposes, for other shootouts that I've published previously. So this is not an expansive review of the topic. It's really just a first look at this. And we're going to see through the benchmarks that there may be something more to explore here. So let's jump into that right now. As it turns out, comparing fans of different dimensions isn't quite as straightforward as testing fans of the same size. Now these two fans could fit on this radiator. This is the Castle 280EX, but to replace a 140 millimeter fan with a 120 millimeter fan, I did need to use this adapter from Noctua, which then did allow me to use this 280 millimeter radiator to test both types of fans. Now switching over to my air cooler, the NHD15 was equally complicated because as you can see, these are round fans. These are not the same square fans I used on the radiator, but I did confirm with Noctua that these are exactly the same fan. They have the same performance characteristics, simply packaged in a different way to fit on different types of coolers. Similarly, I had to do a little bit of wrangling to get the NF-A12X25 onto the NHD15 so that I could directly compare it to the round frame NF-A15. But in the end, I was able to get these fans on, just removing the rubber mounts on the front face of each fan. And before I get into the benchmarks, I'm gonna share some noise samples of these two fans mounted on a radiator at minimum, maximum, and 40 decibel normalized. Now jumping into the benchmark, starting with my liquid cooler, the Deep Cool Castle 280EX. I am using a Ryzen 7 3700X, and I find that at idle, the NF-A12X25 is quite a bit behind the Noctua NF-A14, 
and it's also a little bit louder. So overall, the 140 millimeter fan definitely seems to be ahead at idle, but let's turn to my Cinebench test at maximum RPM. Now here we can see that these fans are actually a lot closer than they were at idle, and this is what's important, of course. Noctua has claimed that the NF-A12X25 is the equal of a lot of 140 millimeter fans, and sure enough, on this radiator, it's about the same, and take a look at that noise level, a whole lot lower, 48 decibels versus 53, which of course begs the question, how does it perform at a noise normalized level? Let's take a look at that here. We see that when we normalize this to 40 decibels at six inches, in fact, the NF-A12X25 gets ahead just slightly. I actually thought it was gonna be more, but it is one degree better here. So on a noise normalized basis, the NF-A12X25 does beat the Noctua NFA14, a pretty surprising result. But let's now turn to the results on my air cooler, the NHD15. And take note for these benchmarks, I use the Ryzen 9 3900X, so they're not directly comparable to the liquid cooling results. So with that said, just focus on the fan versus fan comparison here at idle. NF-A12X25 and the NFA15 are just about equal. In fact, the NF-A12X25 is a little bit better here, whereas it trailed the 140 millimeter class fan on a radiator. So interesting difference here, but luckily both are very quiet down to 31 decibels when measured at 24 inches. Slightly different test methodology here. Again, don't compare these graphs to the ones on a radiator. It's just a fan to fan comparison. Now looking at the Cinebench results with the maximum RPM, here I did expect the NF-A12X25 to put up a really good fight, but it actually was a little bit behind. Also, the noise levels are the same here, whereas on the radiator, the 140 millimeter class fan was a lot louder. My test methodology is a little bit different here, measuring it 24 inches, so outside of the case, quite a bit further away, more like the results that you would actually hear as a user, whereas when I tested it on the radiator, I tested it six inches, so you could definitely hear the difference between various fans. And clearly, testing at 24 inches makes a lot of fans sound the same. But in the end, it does seem that the Noctua NF-A12X25 is a step behind here. And then when we turn to the noise normalized results, not surprisingly, it's just as far behind. I lowered the fan noise down to 35 decibels measured from two feet. And now again, the NF-A12X25 is two degrees hotter than the NF-A15. So overall, on a heat sink, the NF-A12X25 is not the equal of its 140 millimeter class cousin. Okay, well, I have to admit that when I first tested the NF-A12X25 on the NHD15 heatsink, I assumed it would do just as well as the 140 millimeter fan because it had done so well on a radiator. But in the end, it wasn't quite a match for the NF-A14 or more specifically, the A15 version of that fan. Now, looking back on it, it actually sort of makes sense. The fin array on a heatsink is very different from the fin array on a radiator. And the NF-A12X25 strengths are where static pressure is highest the resistance is highest. The higher the resistance, the more this fan pulls ahead of its competitors. But as I've shown in a case cooling environment, it's really nothing special and nothing to write home about. So on a heat sink, which is designed to have a little bit lower resistance than a radiator, there may be better fans than this one, even though everyone out there continues to say this is the best PC fan for CPU coolers. And some people say it's the best PC fan, which is not true. But CPU coolers are a very wide array of products. And if I were to go further down this path, I would test this fan and a number of 120 millimeter fans from Noctua's competitors on a heatsink. Now I've already done this on a radiator. I do it on a heatsink to show the differences. And specifically, I'd probably use a single tower heatsink like the NHU-12S or Arctic Freezer 34 Duo, as opposed to my favorite 120 millimeter class cooler, the Fuma 2 that has dual towers. That complicates things because now the fans are starting to interact. And because that's less common, that's not the design I would use to test 120 millimeter fans on a heatsink. Now, I don't have this scheduled yet, but if there's a lot of interest in this video, I may put it on my schedule. So definitely comment down below if you have questions or if you have thoughts about this video, if it surprised you or if it's interesting to you because that does mean I might do a follow-up to this video in the future. As always, I do appreciate a like and subscribe, and I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru.